What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs and today we'll be exploiting Blue from Hack the Box. This is uh, one of the videos in my series where I'll be prepping to go for the OSCP and Blue is one of the machines that's recommended to start with before signing up for the OSCP. So without wasting time, let's go ahead and start on it. So the first thing that I need to do to do is um, ping my machine, make sure that it's up and blue is on 10.10.40. This is standard procedure for me. If you follow my channel, that's what I do. And now that we know that our machine is up, the next thing is we have to run our end map <coughs> and I'm trying to come up with my own methodology. So this is uh, what I do. As you can see, this shouldn't take too long. Um, if you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing and liking. I do post these videos regularly. And if you want to go for the OSCP, please consider joining me. By subscribing and liking my videos, you, you'll be seeing more from me. So let's zoom in. So our Nmap scan completed. And sure enough, we have a few open ports. And what sticks out to me is this Windows 7 Service Pack 1 and we have port 445 if you watched my previous video uh 445 and 139 even 135 these are NetBIOS ports and smb that means uh the protocol that we use for file sharing talking to printers and all that good stuff and it's windows 7 professional so with smb if you know anything about if you read the history we know that uh eternal blue that's that was one of the targets so let's just run an nmap scan actually let's uh, run this quick script here this is what i run to check for nmap scripts that uh that have smb vound on them so what this means is i'm looking for scripts from nmap that are uh, scanned for vulnerabilities with smbs so as you can see that works i have a few and to do that i'm just going to run my nmap again and specify the scripts for port 139 and 445 so what i'm doing here with this nmap scan is i'm specifying vaughn with a star that means all of these are going to be run against these two ports on this target right here and let's see what happens and sure enough we found something uh, what sticks out the most is ms170110 let's just do a simple google search of that i like to look at uh, exploit db the exploit database that's where you find a lot of exploits so as you can see here we have our eternal blue and you can read more about it but it looks like we do have an exploit here so if we search for this guy in Metasploit, we'll find a Metasploit module, but we don't want to use Metasploit, but we do have a Python script, this one, that we can uh, run. And I did another search, and I ended up on this uh, GitHub page, which I exploit. And this, this exploit here that you see written here is identical to this one zz exploit py is the same code i'm not changing anything but we also get my smb py on the, from the same location because it's dependent on this so what happens is if you try to run the exploit without my smb py it will error out and say you're missing that so we just have to do a wget and get this page here and let's just open this and save my pages so we need this and this one downloaded. So you go to back to your Kali Linux. Uh, let's go to my blue one. So run wget and copy and paste the, the links. There we go. 
we're just going in there and get my SMBPY, which is the requirement. Then we also do the same to get the actual script. Let me just uh, copy the link here and do a double get and paste it here. So if you do a clear LS, now we have our exploit and our MySMB. Let's do a VI to take a look at our exploit. CZZ underscore exploit PY. There it is. So in here, we have a lot of things that we have to do. But before we run the exploit, let's go back and enumerate a little bit more. File, new tab. And let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Try to connect with the SMB client. And last time in my video, I sh shared with you a couple links on how to use SMB client. And right now, we're trying to log in into our remote host anonymously to see if we can get any files. And as you can see, we did get some. Here's a share and right there. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is with our, we have our Python script and we need to create our own payload here for remote execution. And to do that, we're going to use MS, MSF Venom. And what we do is MSF Venom. And you're going to see a lot of this uh, payload. We're telling it payload. And the one that we want is Windows. Uh, this is the generic Windows uh, reverse TCP. And it's Windows Metaprater. Windows Metaprater slash reverse underscore TCP. And what we want is we want to set our local host to be my IP address 10.10.10. .10 .10. Uh, dot fourteen dot thirty three, <clears throat> and our file is going to be an exe, and we want to output it, and we will name it metaprater metaprater dot exe. So this payload we're telling it to. Listen on this local host. This is very important because my machine has two IP addresses. So I need to specify the one for the VPN. And I'm outputting to an ESXE on right here. And this will default to the default metaprater port, which I think is 4444. Let's, let's let it run. So let me explain a little bit here. So once we get this one set up, we're going to set up our payload, uh, I mean our um, exploit, and tell it to connect back to our local machine uses, using this shell for connecting. And it's very simple. We'll be doing this a lot. And as you can see, it, it worked. Let's do an LS. Now we have our metaprater.exe here, which is good. And the fun part here is now we need to adjust our exploit.py so that it actually connects back to our machine in this particular location. And to do that, we just need to edit a couple lines here. Let's do a copy. Let's do a VI. CZZ something dot PY. And there's a few places that we need to uh, edit here. We, earlier we ran our SMB client and we verified that we can connect anonymously. So to do that, we need to adjust the username section here. So let me just search for um username as you can see i've already adjusted it right here i added these two slashes and this is what it looks like it, without uh i'm going to show you without the editing the i z the pi okay with the, it will be blank, so you just need to come in here and edit and edit two slashes here, which is what I have right here. That's the first part. 
Then the second part that we need to edit is the SMB underscore send file location. This is what it will look like before we edit it. SMB underscore send. It will be commented out. I'm just showing you the one that I already did was, uh, I'm a little sluggish on this command line and I don't want to waste your time. You uncomment this by removing the hash and you put our correct file location here and you also uncomment this and specify the path. So if you go back to here, you're going to realize that I uncommented and I put my files is in root documents, blue meta predator. That's the one that we just, our uh, first show that we just generated. And we want you to see is meta predator.exe. And over here, I also specify, once we put it here, we on our machine, we specify the file right here. So you want to edit this to the location where your uh, reverse shell uh, payload is. And that's all you need to do. Once you edit that, that's uh, what I found in most of the cases is I find an exploit that works. I just have to go in and edit my parameters, make it work for yourself. And after, after, after it's done, just exit, right quit. And that's it. From here, we just have to execute our, our exploit and we'll be in business. So our um, payload is ready and our script is out there. What we just need to do is uh, we need to start our handler with Metasploit and listen on our machine. So what we do is uh, let's lo launch our Metasploit MSF console. This is how we, um, I like to listen and also uh, get my show quickly. So MSF console that is going to come back up. Okay, our console is up. And what we're just going to do here is quickly listen, but we we have to use the multi handler. So we'll use multi. Slash handler. And our multi handler allows us actually to open multiple shells as well. Payload, like I, I did earlier. And my payload will be Windows slash Metapreda slash reverse underscore TCP. There we go. Set our host 10.10.10.14.14. .10 .10 uh, Okay, options. That's good. That's exactly what we did earlier. I just wanted to show you one more time. So from here, if I do a run, I'll be listening on port 444. For then I can go back here. Just do my ls, and to run our script, we just have to call Python. Then the name of the script with tab, then specify our target 10.10.10.40, and we specify NTSVCS and enter. As you can see, it will start running it and creating pawn. So this is working. Our exploit is working. It was very simple to adjust. And if I go back here, as you can see, I'm in. I'm in with Metapreda. So I can just say shell. And I'm in. Let's uh, CD. Let's go back. And if I do a dir, I want to see my directory. That's our point to do text. But I can do CD users. And CD in here should go to administrator. Okay, and uh, our flags are always in the desktop, so I can desktop 
and to read the file we just say type type uh, type root dot txt there we go uh if i go a couple down maybe a little bit cd one more down there what other users do i have here harris cd harris now we just want our user to, our user file and i think it's on his desktop again and do type user dot text uh type user dot text and this is our next file so that was very simple guys uh this is how you do it without using the metasploit module if you like this content and if you're into these videos uh remember to like and subscribe to my videos as you can see it's very simple i just wanted to showcase here in this video how to modify an exploit especially a publicly available exploit and i showed you how to do it if you like this uh, subscribe and i'll be showing you more videos guys that's it i'll see you in the next video